Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of Eye of the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, Lauren Frey, and the upcoming Jaw of the Dragon. Over the past couple of months, I've been meaning to make a video about Swery, uh, talking a little bit about what I think of him as a creator, talking about like how I feel about like Deadly Premonition 1 and 2, about the good life, about other things he's done, and you know, just just general happenings in that sphere. And I know I'm very well aware that a lot of people in my audience are very big Swery fans. I've commented on this. It's a big reason why I haven't really come out and uh, said anything about this because I felt like I didn't really want to antagonize my audience. I didn't really want to uh, talk about like, you know, my real feelings on this, or maybe I was downplaying my own feelings to myself, or maybe I just what didn't have enough experience, or maybe I just didn't like feel as if I could like really do what I wanted to talk about justice. And I do think like the time is here. I do think that like I've played enough Swery products. I do think I know enough about him. I do know enough about his audience to like really kind of come out and say this, like I do not like Swery as a creator. Um, I'm, I'm past the point where like, I feel like, oh, maybe his things, his work is like niche, uh, has a, has a niche audience. And maybe I'm just not part of that niche. I don't think his work is good in any way, shape or form. I think the good wife to me really cements this as just him being a fraudulent creator pushed by corrupt gaming journalists trying to make ja uh, Japanese creators more woke, right, essentially. I think there's a number of people like that in Japan, but I think Swery is at the forefront of that kind of movement. It really does feel that way, that, like, this guy is only relevant because of how he panders to, like, Western liberal ideals in in that sense i i, I feel like I, I would i still say that like deadly premonition handles those kind of topics better than their western counterparts but at the end of the day it's it's still woke it's still it's still um out of touch with reality it's still not very good like when you get right down to it like the good life is just a complete mess and and seeing sweary go on twitter like begging people to pay for dlc oh you it's only like 10 bucks you could you could go to starbucks for that like the game is unfinished like people were unhappy with the product you provided with the good life you should not be begging them for more money right like the game was kickstarted so like to me it just seems like it just screams like a sense of irresponsibility and, a, and an inability to like budget or allocate resources or to like give people what they were really interested in because i do think at its core the good life is an idea that really could have worked you know i was kind of surprised when i first started playing this game and thinking that like oh this might actually be my favorite sweary game ever and then just kind of falling off within a couple of hours because of how janky it was because of how like poorly written it was because of like how they didn't really utilize any of its unique aspects in a in a creative or fun way it just felt boring you know and it felt like it should have been so easy to produce something that that actually resonated with me that actually did what it should have done and just been a compelling interesting video game at this stage, I have no interest in what Swery is doing. I I don't like his audience. I don't like I don't like the games he's been putting out, and I have no optimism that this guy will ever produce anything of value for me.